Welcome to the RetScreen 20 Start Worksheet Tutorial. When the RetScreen application is launched, the Start Worksheet appears within Excel. The Start tab shows that this is the first of three worksheets, Start, Energy Model, and Tools. Go to the link shown here to view the presentation of RetScreen 4, especially slides 10 through 13, which describe components of the Start Worksheet. The Start Worksheet is used to enter general information about the project, as well as site reference conditions regarding climate. Energy efficiency measures is the item that will be used for this course. The choice of project type determines what items will populate the energy model worksheet. When the energy efficiency measures option is selected, the energy model worksheet displays a facility characteristics area with data forms to describe the base case and the proposed case for both new and existing facilities In the Facility Type cell, the five options available in the drop-down list are Residential, Commercial, Institutional, Industrial, and Other. In the Analysis Type cell, we select the type of analysis from the drop-down list. If Method 1 is selected, less detailed information is required. Typically, Method 1 is used to determine if a Method 2 analysis is warranted. The Heating Value Reference cell is used to select the Heating Value Reference from the drop-down list. Heating Value is a measure of energy release when a fuel is completely burned. Depending on the composition of the fuel, the amount of steam in the combustion products varies. Higher Heating Value is calculated assuming the combustion product is condensed and the steam is converted to water. Lower heating value is calculated, assuming the combustion product stays in vapor form. Higher heating value is typically used in Canada and the U.S., while lower heating value is used in the rest of the world. We can refer to the heating value and fuel rate section in the tools worksheet to calculate the heating value for various fuels on a dry basis. For projects where the proposed case technology does not require any fuel, it is still important to set this value properly. For example, if we want to perform an emission analysis, the heating value reference is used for the baseline fuels displaced. Also, selecting the heating value reference is important when the base case, proposed case intermediate, and peak load systems require fuel. By ticking the box, we can indicate whether or not the settings are displayed in the worksheet. Note that information in the yellow cells of this section is required to run the model and must be entered. The purpose of this option is to allow us to hide the detailed information once it has been entered. Here we select the language from the drop-down list. Note that we will need to ensure that relevant fonts are installed on our computer to get the full benefit of the multilingual capabilities of RetScreen. Otherwise, some characters might not show correctly in some languages. For example, to correctly view right-to-left languages or East Asian characters, we will need to go to Control Panel, Regional Language Options, and Language, and ensure that the two boxes under Supplemental Language Support are ticked as... Here we select the language of the user manual from the drop-down list. To access the user manual, we should click on the question mark icon shown here. In Excel 2007, the RetScreen menu and toolbar can be accessed by clicking on the RetScreen tab as shown here. The RetScreen user manual or help feature is cursor location sensitive and therefore gives the help information related to the cell where the cursor is located. To access the product database specific to the type of system being considered, we should click on the blue underlined hyperlink next to the entry cell that says C Product Database or CPDB. Note that a number of the links in the manual are hyperlinks to the internet. To perform a RetScreen project analysis, we may select a currency of our choice. We should select the currency in which the monetary data of the project will be reported. 
For example, if we select a US dollar sign, all monetary related items are expressed in US dollars. Selecting user defined allows us to specify the currency manually by entering a name or symbol in the additional input cell that appears adjacent to the currency switch cell. The currency may be expressed using a maximum of three characters. To facilitate the presentation of monetary data, this selection may also be used to reduce the monetary data by a factor. If none is selected, all mon monetary data are expressed without units. Hence, where monetary data is used together with other units, the currency code is replaced with a hyphen. We may also select a country to obtain the International Standard Organization three-letter country currency code. For example, if Afghanistan is selected from the currency switch drop-down list, all project monetary data are expressed in AFA. The first two letters of the country currency code refer to the name of the country and the third letter to the name of the currency. Some currency symbols may be unclear on the screen. This is caused by the zoom settings of the sheet. We can then increase the zoom to see those symbols correctly. Usually, symbols will be fully visible on printing even if not fully appearing on the screen display. We can choose to view the output of the model in different units by selecting between metric or imperial units from the drop-down list. If we select metric, all output values will be expressed in metric units. If we select imperial, output values will be expressed in imperial units where applicable. In the energy model worksheet, both types of units can be shown simultaneously by ticking the Show Alternative Units checkbox. Note that for input cells that have a unit switch, input values will not be automatically transformed into the equivalent selected units. We must select the units preferred for each input cell and ensure that values entered in input cells are expressed in the units shown. The Site Reference Conditions section describes the project site in terms of geographical location and climate conditions. In this cell, we can enter the climate data location with the most rep representative climate conditions for the project. We should consult the REST Screen Climate Database for more information. Note that we have to either select a climate data location via the climate database and paste the data to the worksheet, or enter the climate data manually in the yellow and blue cells displayed when ticking the Show Data tick box. The software allows us to choose units, but keep the defaults. By ticking the box, we can indicate whether or not the climate data are displayed in the worksheet. Note that information in the yellow cells of this section is required to run the model and must be entered. The purpose of this option is to allow us to hide the detailed information once it has been entered. In this cell, we can enter the geographical latitude of the climate data location and the end of the project site location in degrees measured from the equator. For latitudes north of the equator, we enter positive values and latitudes south of the equator negative values. We can consult the RET Screen Climate Database for this information. The latitude of the climate data location can be pasted into the spreadsheet for the climate database. If the latitude of the project is unknown, then the latitude of climate data location can be used as an approximation. Here we can enter the geographical longitude of the climate data location and of the project site location in degrees measured from the Greenwich Meridian for reference purposes only. Longitudes east of the Greenwich Meridian are entered as positive values, and longitudes west of the Greenwich Meridian are entered as negative values. We can consult the Red Screen, Red Screen Climate Database for this information. The longitude of the climate data location can be pasted to the spreadsheet from the climate database. If the longitude of the project location is not known, then the longitude of climate data location can be used as an approximation. In this cell, we can enter the geographical elevation above sea level of the climate data location and of the project site location for reference purposes only. Elevations above sea level are entered as positive values 
and elevations below sea level are entered as negative values. We can consult the Rest Green Climate Database for this information. The elevation of the climate data location can be pasted to the spreadsheet from the climate database. If the elevation of the project location is not known, then the elevation of climate data location can be used as an approximation. In this cell, we can enter the heating design temperature, which represents the minimum temperature that has been measured for a frequency level of at least 1% over the year for a specific area. Typical values for heating design temperature range from approximately negative 40 to 15 degrees Celsius. In this cell, we can enter the cooling design temperature, which represents the maximum temperature that has been measured for a frequency level of at least 1% over the year for a specific area. Typical values for cooling design temperature range from approximately 10 to 47 degrees Celsius. Note that the heating and cooling design temperature values found in the Rest Green Climate Database were calculated based on hourly data for 12 months of the year. We may want to overwrite these values depending on local conditions. For example, where temperatures are measured at airports, the heating or cooling design temperature could be 1 to 2 degrees Celsius warmer in core areas of large cities. In this cell, we enter the annual Earth temperature amplitude which is defined as half the difference between the maximum and minimum of the earth temperature at the depth of measurement. It is used to calculate the earth maximum and minimum temperatures during the year. Depending upon location, the annual earth temperature amplitude typically ranges from 5 to 20 degrees Celsius for depth of measurement of earth temperature equal to zero meters. For instance, Canadian locations typically have an annual Earth temperature amplitude of about 15 degrees Celsius, while U.S. locations have a typical value of about 12 degrees Celsius. The temperature amplitude tends to be higher in cooler locations and lower in warmer ones. For example, a cooler location like Quebec City has an annual Earth temperature amplitude of 15.6 degrees Celsius, and a warmer location like Atlanta has an annual Earth temperature amplitude of 10.6 degrees Celsius. In this cell, we can enter the average Earth temperature for each month, and the model calculates the average air temperature for the entire year. In this cell, we can enter the average relative humidity for each month, and the model calculates the average relative humidity for the entire year. Here, we can enter the amount of solar radiation received on average during one day on a horizontal surface for each month. The values range from zero during polar night months in the polar regions to values around 8.5 kilowatt hours per meter squared in temperate climates during summer months. The model calculates the average daily solar radiation on a horizontal surface for the entire year. In this cell, we enter the average atmospheric pressure for each month. The average atmospheric pressure typically ranges from 60 to 103 kilopascals. The lower end of the range corresponds to a site at an elevation of approximately 4,000 meters, whereas the higher end of the range corresponds to sea level. The atmospheric pressure at standard conditions is 101.3 kilopascals. Note that the atmospheric pressure falls with increasing altitude. Up to 5,000 meters altitude, the mean atmospheric pressure, P, at an altitude of Z meters above sea level can be estimated through the following formula, where P sea level is the atmospheric pressure at sea level. The model calculates the average atmospheric pressure for the entire year. Here, we can enter the average wind speed for each month and the model calculates the average wind speed for the entire year. In this cell, we can enter the average Earth temperature for each month. The Red Screen Climate Database does not provide this value for ground stations, but the NASA satellite analysis data within the Red Screen Climate Database does provide this value at the surface around the globe. We can also obtain this data from local environmental or weather monitoring stations. The model calculates the average Earth temperature for the entire year. Depending upon location, the annual average Earth temperature typically ranges from below 0 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius for
for depth of measurement of earth temperature equal to zero meters. For example, a cooler location like Quebec City has an annual average earth temperature of 7.4 degrees Celsius, while a warmer location like Atlanta has an annual average earth temperature of 16.8 degrees Celsius. In this cell, we can enter the monthly heating degree days below 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The monthly heating degree days are the sum of the heating degree days for each day of the month. For example, degree days for a given day represent the number of Celsius degrees that the mean temperature is above or below a given base. Thus, heating degree days are the number of degrees below 18 degrees Celsius. The model calculates the heating degree days for the entire year. In this cell, we can enter the monthly cooling degree days above 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The monthly cooling degree days are the sum of the cooling degree days for each day of the month. For example, degree days for a given day represent the number of Celsius degrees that the mean temperature is above or below a given base. Thus, cooling degree days are the number of degrees above 10 degrees Celsius. The model calculates the cooling degree days for the entire year. The measured at cell is used to indicate the height at which measurements are recorded. For wind speed, we can enter the height from the ground at which the average wind speed was measured. The average wind speed will typically have been measured at a height of 3 to 100 meters, with 10 meters being most common. Any measurement at a height of less than 3 meters should be corroborated by another source of data given the strong influence terrain roughness and obstacles will have on measurements that are close to the ground. For earth temperature, we can enter the depth at which the average earth temperature and annual earth temperature amplitude were measured. For example, for the 28 Canadian and 111 U.S. ground stations with data listed in ASHRAE, this value should be set to negative 3 meters or negative 10 feet. For data provided by the NASA Satellite Analysis Database, this value should be set to 0 meters. Next, we will go through the Building Envelope Case Study for Rest Screen.